Good afternoon and welcome to today, today's Siesta Show. We're back at La Quinta today for another golf lesson. Now, Camilo, tell us what we're going to be doing today. Hi, Susan. Hi, Justin. Hi. Today, I want, to, I want to teach you and teach everybody who watches the show the etiquette and the rules on, on the green. Right. Uh, one of the emphasizes we have when we teach beginners is to, to make sure they leave the, the, the course, whatever they're doing, the lessons they're having, knowing these, these two things, the etiquette and the rules on the greens very important it's also good for people who never played the game before because there's some curiosities they probably don't know why players do certain things when they reach the green mm. so today they'll they'll understand why they fiddle around so much around the greens okay <laughs> okay so where do we start okay let's go over here a second and the first thing i like to show you is the different things we're going to be using Okay, Susan, Justin, uh, imagine that we are playing on the golf course and we have hit our shots towards the green and we're going to now put three balls on the green, one for each, okay? Uh, Justin, this is going to be your ball, so I'm just going to chuck it over there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we're going to have, Susan, this is going to be yours and I'm going to place this other ball over here, okay? I'll place this one here. So imagine we played and that's where we have reached uh, with our shots to the green. Uh, the reason I put mine close is because I'm the teacher, so I should be able to get it closer to the hole. Now, the etiquette and the rules on the green, the first thing we must do when we reach the green is to what we call, we say, marking the ball. To mark the ball, I brought these things that you're going to see here, okay, and uh, there's a lot of different ways to mark the ball or let's say different things to mark the ball with. I'm just going to take three of them. The first one and most common that people use is a button that comes with the glove. This button here. Ah, yeah. Okay. Close up of these. Yeah. Okay. So we have the button. As you can see, the, uh, this other glove I have here doesn't have a button. Usually professionals, the, they use gloves that don't carry a button. The button is usually on amateurs. So the button, you take it off from here and we're going to be using this to mark the ball. That's one of the ways we can mark it. The other way we have uh, just a plain coin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is the most common way professionals mark the ball. And then we have this, which is a special marker. It's just, you actually buy it to mark the ball mm -hmm. and we have this fork which is to repair divots which I'll go into in a second but it also has a marker here okay so okay. that you take it out and you mark it there's plenty of different things like that around the market okay? I'm going to take the coin I'm going to give Susan this marker and I'm going to give Justin the, the button all right and I'm going to place my coin behind my ball towards the target okay towards the flag so I'm just going to walk around here one very, very important thing is probably the first rule you should learn before even marking the ball is that you never step on the imaginary putting line of any of the players. Oh, why? Because if you step on it, it's bad etiquette. It's bad education. If I step on my own line, Susan, that could be a two-shot penalty. Reason really? being, I can be fixing or making my putting path better okay ah. so it's really important never cross the line you can go over the line the imaginary line behind is easier but never physically step on it all right oh. so if i want to go around i would never do this in justin's line i would go around or over okay so now i'm going to just place a coin behind the ball towards the target you don't need to put it too far inside they would be fine okay and that's what we call marking the ball that is the first thing you should do when you reach the green. Okay, now when once we have the ball marked, what we have to do is, and this is really important, one of the problems we have on, the go on, on uh, any golf course is that people don't repair what we call the pitch mark. Okay, let me get a pitch repair. This is a pitch fork, whatever it's called in different ways, but this is to repair pitches. What are uh, pitch marks? Pitch marks are the marks the ball m does on the green or makes on the green when it flies from a long distance. So something, it flies on the green and there would be something like a hole here, yeah? Mm. That's what we call the ah, pitch mark, yeah? Okay. Now this is the only thing you're allowed to repair on the green. I'm, what I mean by that, you take the fork, you go from out to in and you lift it up and then you just tap it down and repair it. Right. Okay, sometimes the grass is going to be open, it's going to be brownish, so in, in that case you have to turn the fork around and make sure you cover all the area which is brown and then tap it down. We're not doing it here because there's a perfect green so there's no need for it. Okay, so that's the first thing you should do once you've marked the ball. Right? Uh, the things which are allowed to be done on, on the green is you're allowed to clean or wipe away any loose impediments which are on your putting line. Mm -hmm. But you're not allowed to tap down or try to repair anything besides your pitch marks. Okay. Uh, Justin, you can repair your pitch mark and anybody else's pitch mark. It doesn't matter whose pitch mark it is. If it's your line, you should repair it. And if you can, repair a couple of them, yeah? That would be also a good idea. Yours and somebody else's who probably hasn't repaired it before. Right. Okay. 
You understand so far? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so now we repair the pitch mark and now who has to play first? Uh, who will be the, per the one to play first? Justin, Susan or, or me? Who would, would, would be the answer, Susan? Who would have to now play? Who's first to um, play? The one who's closest? Right? No, the other way around. The one who's first. In oh. this case, it's Justin. So Justin has to now go to his ball, to his marker. Don't step on your line, Justin. You're walking all over it. Good. Now, Justin, first place the ball where it was before. Then pick up. The, exactly. Good. Now, when a person is ready to putt, this is very important. This is etiquette. Never, never, never stand in his putting line in this sense. In other words, if you have to putt Justin, I would never be here. We would be standing where Susan is, which is well over here, or well on the other side. All right? Okay, so go try to putt that one now. And Susan, can the flag be in the hole or must it come out? Can the flag be in the hole? I yeah. I think it can, can't it? No, no. The, flag, the flag has to be out of the hole when the ball reaches the hole. Oh. Justin, don't hit it yet. So this is what we did in the last lesson. We had Manolo tending the flag. When you can't see the flag, somebody will tend it for you. But in this case, we're very near, so we don't need to have the flag in the hole. So we pull the flag out and keep it well away. One very important thing, if your ball is on the fringe of the green, not on the green, then you have the option to keep it in or out, okay? So now, Justin has putted and he's made a wonderful putt. Now, in this case, Justin, I would suggest that you say, okay, I'm going to finish the putt instead of marking it again, and you can go ahead and finish it, Sorry, all right? Finish. You can finish it, yeah. Susan, we got to stand behind here, so mm -hmm. here, visually out. Great, now you can pick up the ball, and exactly. Okay, now, now it's Susan's turn to putt, and we have a small problem here, Susan. What's mm -hmm. the problem? Well, there's that coin in the way. Exactly, my coin is in yeah. your way. Uh, Justin, we have two options here. What, do, what would you think the two options would be? You go first. Exactly, I can go first. Susan can say to me, Camilo, why don't you play first? But I'm trying to beat Susan, so if I go first, I'm going to show her how that putt is going to break. And I'm not going to do that because I want to beat her. So Susan, what you have to tell me, please, is you have to get down, read the putt, and ask me to move my coin either to your left or to your right, wherever you think it's necessary. Um, okay, can you move it to the right, please? To your right. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to walk over here, and I'm going to take my putter, and I'm going to aim my putter to a reference point. This palm tree here, okay, so I'm just going to put the putter aiming to this palm tree and move it. Susan, you can ask me to move it once, twice, three times, 20 times, whatever times you want, but usually once is enough. Okay, so now I'm not in your way and you can now comfortably putt. Okay, let me just go over here. So first the ball, then you take, don't put it on top. That's it, great. Okay, can I have my marker back, please? No, no, don't touch the ball. See, you can't, once you've taken the marker away, you cannot touch it, all right? I'm joking about the marker, yeah? But I lose a lot of markers throughout the year. Okay, Susan, have a little practice swing first, please. Good. All right, now, as you can see, Jason's, uh, sorry, Justin, Susan's ball is further than, than, than mine, so it's again Susan to play. Okay, Susan, go up, walk up and just uh, tap it in. Good part. Okay, you pushed it a little bit, it's okay. All right, now what I'm going to do now, you're going to see this, take your ball out please, Susan. You're going to see this a lot in professional golf, how long they take to uh, sometimes to putt, and they do it because it's, it's this difficult. Uh, before that, I wanted to show you this. This is a Swiss knife for golfers. Okay, so if it has a pitch repair, it's got a knife, it's got all these little things which a golfer will need to, to use uh, on a golf course, yeah? Uh, this is just a curiosity, they even make that for, for golf. It's got a pitch repair with somewhere around here, which I should have taken out before. Okay, it's here. Okay, so this is a Swiss knife, oh, yeah? Wow. So imagine that I'm playing and some, somebody before me hasn't repaired his pitch mark, I'm stepping on the ball, I would come over here and repair. You're going to see this a lot in professional golf, they do things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then they walk around and read it and before they, they're ready to play, they come back here, they look at it, and then you will see this a lot. They'll be cleaning the surface. This is perfectly legal to do. What's not legal is to tap it down and start doing it. Many times you're going to see that people walk wrong on greens and they create a sc they scratch the greens if you do this and you fix it it's on your line that's a two-shot penalty so make sure you never do it you can repair those foot marks once you finish playing okay so now i'm ready to putt i read the putt and i'm going to place the ball behind in front of my coin like that okay and then 
you'll see this bend down sometimes again and now I'm going to putt okay and that would be basically rules in that ticket one last thing the flag now we must put it back into the hole what we do when we begin playing golf on as, as beginners the first one to finish putting picks up the flag and he's ready to put it in the hole when we finish putting okay so hopefully you've understood the etiquette and some of the rules there are more rules but these are the basic things you need to know when when you're on the golf course okay Susan Justin okay, that's, that's great thank great. you very thank much, you very much. Thank you. Back again next week for some more golf. Great, excellent. Bye. Bye. Okay.